Hi there, everyone. Um, welcome again to Indian Story Read Along. Today's story, I was thinking whether or not I should read this one, but it is part of the Panchatantra stories and it is part of our tradition. Like it's part of that entire set of stories. Um, and back then they were not so careful about what they thought was violent and what they thought wasn't. Um, so this is actually a lot having to do with nature and nature is pretty violent. Um, including animals, which is what Panchatantra and uh, Jataka stories are a lot about. Um, so let me just check. This is actually Jataka tales. I made a mistake. It's not Panchatantra. This is from the Jataka tales. Um, and as you see on the top, it's from Amar Chitrakata, one of these uh, big bumper issues that they put out all the time in the 1980s and 90s. This is called the Brave Quail. In a forest near Varanasi, there once lived some quails. The shady grove in which they nested was also the favorite grazing ground of a herd of elephants. A wise and just elephant, the Bodhisattva, was the leader of that herd. So I've explained in other videos and I'll tell you again in case um, you're not familiar. Bodhisattva is the name of the soul that eventually reincarnated into the Buddha. And so this soul was kind of uh, I went through a lot of different journeys, I guess you could say, and that's including animals uh, as taking uh, life as an animal and different animals from everything from a goat to an elephant to another elephant and eventually a human, eventually the Buddha. Um, so Bodhisattva was known to be very, very kind. And he is in this story too, but he's not actually in the story much. One day, one of the quails laid some eggs. And uh, she says, I hope my eggs will be safe till they are hatched. The other one says, you will have to keep careful watch. You know how careless the elephants are. Soon, the fledglings were hatched. One day, look, the elephants are making for our grove. What shall I do, says the mother. I can only fall at their feet and beg for protection. As the leader came close, the quail says, Oh, mighty elephant, my little ones are in danger. If your herd enters this grove, they will be trampled to death. And then the Bodhisattva king, who is actually going to be the Buddha one day, says, Do not fear, your fledglings will not be harmed. The elephant stood over the nest while his herd grazed. When they had had their fill, he says to her, there is a rogue elephant, a wild and dangerous animal who might soon be coming this way. And the mother quail says, what shall I do? I'm so small and weak. She says it just like that. And then the elephant king says, because he is a, a good, honest, compassionate soul, he gives her the same advice, which isn't actually going to work. He says, you must appeal to him for mercy and hope for the best. Soon after the elephants had gone, there you can see the rogue elephant in the distance. And one quail says, the rogue elephant. And the other one says, he looks fierce. The mother quail wasted no time. She was at his feet, her head lowered in salute. Oh, powerful one, I beg of you, spare my young ones. And then he says, how dare you come in my way? And you can see he's kicking the other quail out of the way. The elephant lashed at the nest. There, that is the end of your silly brood. <gasps> he killed the babies. This is why I didn't want to read the story. But look, look, it's it, it it's actually a very important lesson. And, and they did not shield their children from things the way we are shielding our children. And the way I want to shield my children from these things. It, it was a different time and this is an important story. That's why I'm reading it. As the quail wept over the remains of her dead children, she starts to get angry and then she realizes that what happened to her should never happen again to anyone else and she is going to make it so that that's what ends up happening. She doesn't want anyone else to get hurt the way she does. So now she has a purpose. She says, I will soon show you how strong I am. And this is exactly why kindness and respect should not be mistaken for weakness. 
The mother quail is not weak, as you'll soon see. Grief had made her bold and set her thinking hard. She went to a crow and told him her bad tale. You must spot this rogue elephant and peck out both his eyes. And then the crow says, depend on me. Such wickedness should not go unpunished. So she gets the help from her friends, others who like her are also small. If you notice, it's not like she's like, all right, I'm going to get a bigger elephant to go after him. No, no, no. Small but powerful. Having got the crow out on her side, the quail went to an ant. My little friend, I need your help. And then the ant says, I heard about your babies. I am deeply grieved. So everyone is feeling their, this pain. They want to help. That is why I am here. We must teach the cruel elephant a lesson. And then ant says, how can I help? Quail says, my friend the crow will peck out his eyes. After that, you must lay your eggs in the empty sockets. Ooh, did you guys notice something? She's a red ant. She is a red ant. She is not one of those nice black ants <laughs> that are like super friendly and they just want some sugar on the sidewalk. No, this is a red ant. A good idea, says the ant. When they hatch, my little ones will begin to bite. Did you notice that thing with the ant though? I just realized he killed babies. The rogue elephant killed babies. And now these babies, <laughs> baby ants are gonna attack him. Now the quail then went to the frog. Dear friend, leave everything and come out. The frog rose to the surface and croaked. What is the matter? That's my frog voice. What is the matter? All my young ones were cruelly killed by a spiteful elephant. I am trying to get my friends to help me punish him. And the frog says, you can count on me. As they went along, the quail unfolded her plans. When the ants hatch, the rogue elephant will be badly stung. He will run blindly looking for water to ease his pain. This is what I want you to do. Oh, what could it be? A little later, the crow darted at the elephant, plucked his eyes out and flew away, ah, says the elephant. You can see his eyeballs coming out. Ugh. My one kid will think this is awesome. My other kid will just be so scared <laughs> looking at that picture. Then the ant laid her eggs in his blind eyes. Ah, my eyes are on fire, water. I need water, says the blind elephant. Just then, the frog croaked from a steep precipice close by, like a cliff. The croak of a frog. There must be water nearby. See how the quail planned that? She knew exactly what the elephant was going to think. So she wasn't weak and she wasn't stupid. She was actually quite brilliant and she was trying to be kind and respectful. And that elephant threw it away and now he's going to kind of get what he gets. There must be water nearby. I'll follow the sound. As the elephant got to the edge of the precipice, the frog leapt onto a narrow ledge below and croaked with all his might. The elephant followed the sound and went hurtling down to his death. Crash. And that's really the only way a bunch of tiny little animals can kill an elephant. When the crow, the ant, the frog, and the quail met later, the quail says, I hope the story of the, of the elephant will be a good example to all strong creatures who harm the weak and the helpless. The end. So, I mean, it was violent, but it was an important thing. It was an important lesson. There's a lot of kids, I'm sure, at your schools that are not kind to people who are smaller than them. And they, again, mistake that smaller people are not very strong. And uh, this little group proved that very, very wrong. The biggest one out of all of them was the crow. And I'm not really for killing, but uh, that elephant was never going to change. And he was also going to continue to harm all the animals in that forest. 
So the quail, you know, there's no police, so uh, <laughs> she just kind of did her own vigilante justice, which was the right thing in this story. I hope you'll join us again for other stories just like this one. We're going to read things from Panchatantra, Jataka, Tinkle Stories, other comic books, Amachitrakata, all kinds of things. Um, so join us again next time on Indian Story Read Along.